Hi guys. So what we're going to do today is we're going to continue looking at rational functions and how to graph them. But what we're going to do instead of looking at transformations is we're going to graph these the way we're going to graph most of our rational functions. And what we're going to do is we are going to identify some of the components and graph those components and then use that to sketch where those curves are going to be in our graph. So the most important things we need to find are the asymptotes. So we mentioned these a little bit when we talked about transformations. Uh, there's two types of asymptotes that we're going to look at. Well, there's three really, but one takes the place of the other. So one of them is vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are restrictions on our domain. Uh, vertical asymptotes occur because, again, you cannot divide by zero. And as you get closer and closer to that value, your graph either shoots up to positive infinity or shoots down to negative infinity. So to find a vertical asymptote, what you would do is you would set the denominator equal to zero. Remember, these are lines, okay? So there'll always be an equation of x equals something. Vertical asymptotes occur when you have a number divided by zero, okay? A number divided by zero is undefined. When you have zero divided by a number, that actually gives you zero, which is why we are going to set the top equal to zero to find our x-intercepts. So x-intercepts occur when the top is equal to zero. So again, x-intercepts x should be written as coordinates, okay? So they'll be written as something comma zero. You, can't have, you could have more than one of these. You could have none of these on your graph. Y-intercepts, we find those the same way we find y-intercepts on every single graph you will ever find. You plug in zero for x. These will also be coordinates. So these will be zero comma something. There will only be one or there will not be one at all. Okay, one or none. You cannot have more than one of these because then it will not be a function. All right, let's look at horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes um, are a little bit harder. They're not really harder to find. They're really pretty easy to find, but we have some rules that we need to know. Horizontal asymptotes are going to show the end behavior of our graph. What they're based off of is the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom of our rational function. If we say this function is bottom heavy, that means the degree on the bottom of the function is higher, that horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. If the degree on the top and the bottom are the same, then what we do is we divide the leading coefficients. And if you remember from polynomials, the leading coefficients were the numbers in front of the highest degree term. So this would just be y equals one leading coefficient divided by the other leading coefficient. If this graph is top heavy, if there's a higher degree on the top of this function, there is no horizontal asymptote. But what you could have is a slant asymptote. So what we would do is we would check for a slant asymptote. And we'll get into those a little bit later in the notes. So before we talk about tangent and together, I want to go down here and do a quick example of those horizontal asymptotes. So again, we look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. Well, this top, biggest exponent there is 4. Biggest exponent in the bottom is 4. Those are the same degree, so we would divide those leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote of this function would be y equals 4. Let's look at the second one. All right, this is in factor or intercept form. So this is a degree two on the top, and this is degree three on the bottom. So we would say this is bottom heavy. It's a higher degree on the bottom, so that horizontal asymptote is just y equals zero. Don't even need to do any work. Just recognize it's a higher degree on the bottom. All right, the last part of that box, that tangent together piece, what that's gonna do is that's gonna help us draw the curves of our graph. Now, I will tell you, when it comes to sketching these graphs, they don't need to be incredibly accurate in terms of points. You need to have your graph sketched in the right area, okay? It needs to approach the asymptotes in the right places. To help us do that, we're going to use these tangent and together concepts. So what tangent means, uh, if you remember, tangency was when we talked about polynomial graphs, okay? If a graph kind of touched that point and bounced off, okay, then it was tangent at that point. That is still going to hold true. If you have an even multiplicity of an x-intercept, then your graph is going to be tangent at that point. So if you have a squared factor in the numerator, okay, then your graph will just touch at that point or be tangent at that point. So just like it was for polynomials, and we'll see some examples of that here later. The other point, part of this, the together part, that refers to, it's going to help us with our asymptotes. Typically, when you have a vertical asymptote, okay, so let's say this is our vertical asymptote. Typically, if one end 
is going up, the other end is going to be going down. All right, and it could be flipped. So we could have a graph where we've got an asymptote here and this side is up. Well, then typically this side is going to be going down on the opposite side. When that is not the case is when what we say that graph is going to be together at that point. That also occurs when you have a squared factor. So if you have a squared factor in the denominator, then your graph will be in the same direction, basically, on both sides of your vertical asymptote. So your graph will go in the same direction on both sides of the vertical asymptote. So for example, if you have 1 over x minus 3 squared, that actually might be the example we have later on, but that's okay. At 3, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote because that's the value that makes the bottom equal to 0. Because that factor is squared, if my graph is going up on the right side of that asymptote, that graph is also going to go up on the left side of the asymptote. Now, if you want to see this, um, some examples of this kind of stuff a little bit more clear, um, what I would recommend doing is watching that optional vid video that talks about the beginning of the Desmos activity. And that's going to show you a lot of examples and kind of you can see a little bit more of why your graph is doing different things in different places. So I would definitely recommend watching that video. Um, again, just remember that video is separate though from this one. All right, so let's go ahead and actually graph some of these. So again, in order to graph these, what we're going to do is we're going to find the asymptotes and the intercepts. Then we'll use that to help us get a rough sketch of where those curves are actually going to fall. So we're just going to go step by step here. We're going to start with the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes occur when the bottom equals 0. These are lines. The bottom equals 0 when x equals 1. So x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. All right, next step, horizontal asymptote. All right, let's look at the degree. These are both degree 1, top and bottom, so they're the same degree. So we will divide our leading coefficients. So I would do 2 divided by 1. I get y equals 2. All right, now let's find our intercepts. We'll start with the x-intercept. X-intercept occurs when the top equals 0. So if I were to set the top equal to 0, I would get 3 over 2. And remember, x-intercepts are points, so this is 3 over 2, comma 0. Y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3 over 1. So 0, 3 is my y-intercept. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sketch our graph. Now when it comes to sketching our graph, here's what we need to consider. If you notice, we've got these asymptotes that kind of make like four little boxes. Really what we're going to do is we're going to draw our graph in two of these boxes. Okay? I cannot draw a graph in both this box and this box. The reason for that is it's not going to be a function. If I were to draw a curve here and a curve here, that is not a function. Okay? What I also need to do is I need to approach both asymptotes. So what I need to figure out is on this left part of my graph, the left of that vertical asymptote, we need to decide, will I draw this curve in the top quadrant or in the bottom quadrant? Well, that intercept gives you a pretty good idea. I can't touch any x-intercept here, and I have to touch this center, x-intercept. So this graph is going to have to go in the top left quadrant. All right, now let's go to the right of that asymptote. All right, if I were to draw this curve up here, First of all, that doesn't follow those together rules that we talked about, okay? In order for it to go in the same direction, this factor would have to be squared, and it's not. The other thing, we have to go through that x-intercept. So I'm instead going to go in this box. The only accurate points you have to have are your intercepts and your asymptotes. The rest of these points, a lot of these are going to be fractions and decimals. Those points do not need to be accurate. You just need to have those curves drawn in the right place. All right, let's go to the next one. So the first thing we always do, I didn't mention this enough in the very beginning, you always need to factor first. And when we get to removable discontinuities, you'll see why, but always factor first. All right, so now we're factored, so let's go ahead and start by finding our asymptotes. So vertical asymptote, bottom equal to 0, there are two places, x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So we'll make both of those vertical asymptotes. All right, horizontal asymptote. Look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. This is a degree 1 and a degree 2. So it's a bigger degree on the bottom, so it's bottom heavy, so it's just y equals 0. 
All right, now let's talk about our x-intercept. X-intercept, when the top equals zero, in this case, it's one. So one, zero is a point on this graph. Y-intercept, plug in zero. I get zero, one over nine. All right, so now, um, again, if you watch that other Desmo, or the other video that goes to that Desmos, you'll see a lot of examples of what these graphs look like. Now, one thing you may notice, you cannot touch this vertical asymptote. We know that because it's impossible to divide by zero, so we can't have a point on that graph. You can have a point on a horizontal asymptote, though, and that's something we haven't seen so far. Horizontal asymptotes are still going to show end behavior. Okay, The ends of my graph are still going to go towards this line, but what happens in the middle that can be a lot of different things. And this graph is going to touch that horizontal asymptote. We know that because there's actually a point on it. So if there's a point on it, it has to touch it. And when we get to solving, you'll actually spot those points algebraically. All right, so what we know again, at the vertical asymptote, I either need to be going towards positive or negative infinity. I also know that I cannot cross the x-axis anywhere except for that one spot. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at this side of the asymptote. I need to figure out, do you think my graph is going to go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity at this point? Well, let's think about that. If I were to go down to negative infinity, in order to get to that y-intercept, I have to cross the x-axis somewhere uh, that I don't actually have as an x-intercept. So that's not possible. So it's going to have to go to positive infinity at that point. I also know I don't have any squared factors. Since there are no squared factors, this graph is going to do the opposite thing on the other side. All right, so now let's just go ahead and finish that curve. We're going to go toward the asymptote. Let's finish this one. We're going to go through our intercepts. Then when I get to this point right here, I do not have any squared factors. So it's not going to touch or be tangent. It's going to go through that point, and we're going to go down towards our asymptote. There are no squared factors. So I'm going to be in the opposite side, and then I'm going to go towards my asymptote. Now, if that is kind of confusing for you guys to figure out where these graphs go, there's another way that you can figure out how to draw these curves. And what you can do is you can use a sign chart like we did for those inequalities last semester. So just a refresher, to do that sign chart, I would pick a test point in one of these regions. So for example, I would pick a test point somewhere to the left of that asymptote. So let's say I pick negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is a negative number. Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative number. Negative 4 minus 3 is a negative number. A negative divided by a negative times a negative overall is negative. So this region is negative. I cannot cross the x, I cannot switch from positive to negative unless there's a vertical asymptote or an x-intercept. So right, now let's pick this region in between the vertical asymptote and the x-intercept. Let's pick a test point. Well, we already did. Okay, we picked one over nine. That was positive. So this section has to be positive. Let's pick the next region. Okay, let's pick a test point. Let's pick two. Two minus one is positive. Two plus three is positive. Two minus three is negative. Positive divided by positive times negative overall is negative. So that region is negative. Then finally, pick a test point over here in this region. Okay, something greater than 3. If I pick 5, 5 minus 3 is positive, 5 plus 3 is positive, 5 minus 3 is positive, 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 overall is positive. This region is positive. And that tells me where my graph goes. All right, if you feel pretty comfortable, pause the video, try these next two. I will tell you these two will have those squared terms we were talking about. All right, so again, first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor. So the bottom, that's a perfect square binomial. So this would be x minus 3 squared. Let's find our components. Bottom equal to 0, x equals 3. That factor is squared, so that would be one of those together cases. So when we get to our graph, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, horizontal asymptote. This is bottom heavy, so y equals 0. All right, let's do our intercepts. X-intercept, set the top equal to zero. Well, two does not equal zero, so there are no X-intercepts. Y-intercept, plug in zero for X, and this is a little easier in the original. Uh, that gives me two over nine. 
All right, so now let's get our graph. Again, if you want to do a sign chart and pick some test points, you are welcome to do that. For example, if I pick 1, that would be 2 over 1 minus 3 squared, which would be positive. It's going to tell me that this region is positive. I also know there's a y-intercept there that's positive, so that gives me this information. To figure out on the right side, though, two clues. One, again, you can pick a test point. If you pick a test point, you're going to get a positive value in this region. The other thing we know, that factor was squared. Since that factor was squared, at x equals 3, your graph is going to go in the same direction on both sides of the asymptote because that factor was squared. All right, then let's look at this last one. Again, go ahead and factor. We'll take out our GCF. And then the top can factor a little bit more. That is also, again, a perfect square trinomial. All right, and let's go ahead and find our components. We'll start with the vertical asymptote. Set the bottom equal to 0. There are 2. x equals 4. And x equals negative 2. Horizontal asymptote. These are the same degree, so we would divide the leading coefficients, which is 2 over 1, so I get y equals 2. All right, let's do our intercepts. x-intercept, set the top equal to 0. 1, 0, but that factor is squared. Since that factor is squared, that is a tangent situation, just like it was with polynomials. So at 1, 0, your graph is going to be tangent. It's going to touch that point and go back in the same direction. All right, y-intercept. Plug in 0 for our x's. It's easier in the original. That gives me a negative 1 fourth. All right. So again, you have some options here. You can pick some test points. Okay, Pick a test point in this region. Pick a test point in this region. Pick a test point here. And pick a test point here. The other option, think about what your graph does using the information that you know. All right, I'm going to have to touch those two points and go towards my asymptote without crossing the x-axis. So this has to go down at this asymptote. There were no squared factors in the bottom, so I have to go in the opposite direction on that asymptote. I also know this has to be in the top because I can't cross the x-axis again. There are no x-intercepts over there. All right, then we know our graph is tangent at that point. Since it's tangent at that point, it touches that point, it turns, and it goes back in the same direction. And then this last one, we would be up in the top right quadrant because, again, no squared factors in the bottom have to be going in the opposite direction of that asymptote. Alternative option, if you want, pick a test point, plug it in, and you'll get those positive and negative values. All right, so that is the bulk of a basic rational function and how to graph it. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at two special features that happen in some of these rational functions. One of these we talked about briefly at the very beginning, and that is a slant asymptote. A slant asymptote can occur when there's no horizontal asymptote. Specifically, slant asymptotes occur when the degree on the top is one degree higher than the bottom. So a slant, or sometimes called oblique asymptote, um, really it looks like a line. Okay, um, It takes the place of a horizontal asymptote. It still shows end behavior. You can still cross it, but it's going to show what your ends are doing. The way we find a slant asymptote is pretty simple. We divide. And it's even easier than regular division because we can ignore the remainder. The remainder is not really going to affect uh, the detail of the graph that we'll be able to draw. So let's look at this example here. Again, the first thing we have to do is factor. Again, when you see removable discontinuities, you'll know why. Okay. So now, let's do the same thing we've been doing. Let's find our vertical asymptote. Same thing, set the bottom equal to 0. Vertical asymptote is x equals 2. All right, now let's talk about horizontal asymptote. This is top-heavy. It's a higher degree on the top. Specifically, it's 1 degree higher on the top. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. What we're going to have is a slant asymptote. The way we find that is we use division. In this case, we can use synthetic division because that's a first degree uh, polynomial there. So synthetic division, I'll put 2 in the box. The remainder does not matter. Okay, We can actually graph that. So what I get when I do division, 1 degree less than the original, this would be x plus 1. So my slant asymptote is y equals x plus 1. 
So I'm going to graph the line y equals x plus 1 as a dotted line. And that is my new horizontal asymptote. It's literally the same thing, it's just slanted, it's just turned. It's still gonna show end behavior, it's still possible to cross it, your ends will still go towards it. All right, let's go ahead and find our intercepts. X-intercepts at the top, top equal to zero, we've got two in this case. Y-intercept, plug in zero for X, it's a little easier into the original. So zero, three, three, zero negative two, zero. All right, so again, you're going to go toward your asymptote. So I can either draw my curve up here or here on the left side of this asymptote. All right, I'm not gonna draw it in this area for a couple of reasons, um, most of which is just those two points that are drawn right above it. I'm going to go through those two points that I know that I have. All right, then I'll look to the right of the asymptote. Again, there was not a squared factor, so I should be going in the opposite direction at that vertical asymptote. I also know I have to go through this x-intercept. If I drew my curve up there, it wouldn't go through that intercept. So I'm going to draw my graph here. All right, let's talk about some of that characteristics. Domain, negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. Range in this case, negative infinity to infinity. Every y value here is actually touched. All right, end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, our function is approaching negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, this function is approaching positive infinity. It's a little bit different than the graphs we've seen so far. The graphs we've seen so far, our end behavior has actually approached an actual number, an actual integer, where that horizontal asymptote was. With slant asymptotes, though, it can actually occur positive. It can, uh, yeah, it can go towards positive and negative infinity. All right, we're almost there. So the last characteristic we're going to look at are removable discontinuities. Now, you may remember, we actually talked about this at the very beginning of the year. So at the very beginning of the year, we talked about discontinuities. We saw these on a graph, and they looked something like this. Another thing that we'll call removable discontinuity is a hole. So what happens with this this is going to occur whenever you have a factor that cancels out. This is why you must, 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 must factor first, because you may miss this. You have to factor first to make sure there's no holes. So let's look at this very first example, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor. So that's the difference of squares. And you'll notice the x minus 3 factor cancels out. If x minus 3 cancels out, that means your graph is going to have a hole or a removable discontinuity. The x value of that hole is the x value of the canceled out factor. I canceled out x minus 3, which means that the x coordinate is 3. To get the y coordinate, I'm going to take 3 and plug it into the remaining function. Well, let's look at the function that's left over. My remaining function is just x plus 3. So if I plug in 3, I get 6. So at 3, 6, I'm going to have an open circle. Now I'm going to graph, graph the remaining function. Well, I'm not going to go through and find the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, because look at your remaining function. Your remaining function is y equals x plus 3. That's not a rational function. That's just a line. So this here, actually, it's not going to look like a rational function. This is a line with a hole. And that's what your graph is going to look like. There is no vertical asymptote. There is no horizontal asymptote. Now, we can find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Again, it's just a line, so plug in 0 to get the y-intercept, set it equal to 0 to get the x-intercept. But there are no asymptotes because, again, what, what's remaining after finding that hole is just a line. All right, let's look at the next one. Again, let's factor first. And you'll notice that x minus 5 cancels out. That means you're going to have a hole. The x-coordinate of that hole, because I canceled out x minus 5, the x-coordinate is 5. Now let's look at the remaining function. x minus 2 is at the, in the denominator. It's at the bottom. So the remaining function is 1 over x plus 2. If I plug in 5, I get the y-coordinate of 1 over 7. So 5, 1 over 7 is an open circle on my graph. The remaining function is, in fact, rational. So let's go ahead and find those characteristics that we've been finding. Vertical asymptote, set the bottom equal to zero. 
horizontal asymptote. Look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. This is bottom heavy, so it's y equals zero. All right, x-intercept. Set the top equal to zero. That can't happen, so we don't have an x-intercept. Y-intercept, plug in zero. And I get one half. All right, now let's sketch our graph. All right, looking to the right of that asymptote, I'm obviously going to be in this top part of my graph because I have a point and that open circle there. Go towards your asymptotes. There are no squared factors, so I have to be going in the opposite direction at that vertical asymptote. Again, you also could pick a test point, and you would get a negative value if you picked a test point in that region as well. All right, two more. This next one's kind of a special case. Uh, let's go ahead and factor. All right, so you'll notice x minus 5 cancels out. What's kind of weird, though, if I think that there's a hole there, the x-coordinate would be 5. If I go and plug 5 in, though, I'm going to get 6 divided by 0. You can't divide by 0. It's undefined. So I can't have an undefined value. I don't actually have a hole at 5. This is kind of a special case because that x minus 5 factor is still there. You actually have a vertical asymptote there. And you can't have a hole on that vertical asymptote. So this is actually just going to be treated just like you would graph this function in general. So x equals 5, vertical asymptote. These are the same degree. We would divide the leading coefficients. x-intercept, set the top equal to 0. y-intercept, plug in 0. I'll use a different color here. All right, and then again, to sketch this graph, pick some test points if you want. Um, but I can see here, I'm going to be in this bottom section because I have two intercepts. There are no squared factors. I also can't create any new x-intercepts. So I'm going to be in that region. All right, last one. Let's go ahead and factor. The bottom is a perfect square trinomial. Let's find our features. Set the bottom equal to zero. And again, you'll notice that factor is squared. So that's going to be a together case. Your graph is going to go in the same direction on both sides of that vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, this is bottom heavy. X-intercept, we'll use a different color because I already drew my asymptotes. Okay, so top equal to zero. Y-intercept, plug in zero. So there's zero, negative two, and there's two, zero. So again, kind of a weird one to actually graph, um, but let's look at what we have. I know I'm going to have to go through that intercept. I know I cannot create any new x-intercepts over here. So I'm going to have to have a curve in this region. Again, if you're not sure, pick a test point. That's going to give you some more information. Now let's look over here. Well, this is that together situation we talked about. That factor was squared, which means if my graph is going down on this side of the asymptote, it has to be going down on this side of the asymptote as well. What I also know is that I'm not going to be tangent at this point because that factor wasn't squared. I do have to cross, but it's not going to go towards infinity because I still have to go towards my horizontal asymptote. So what this graph does is it crosses through that point, but then it still goes towards that asymptote. Now, how high it goes right there, that is not something you can figure out unless you have a calculator, so don't worry about that. Just know that it does cross through that point, and it does continue to go towards the horizontal asymptote at the end. Remember, your horizontal asymptote will always show your end behavior. All right, so that's a lot for today. Um, the most important thing for you guys to know is how to find the asymptotes, the intercepts, and to make sure you always factor first to see if there's any removable discontinuities. That's the biggest thing to get out today. Since today is a ton of information, next class there is no new information. It's really just going to be a day to review um, and kind of just work more on these graphs to get some extra practice in on these. Again, if you want to see some more examples of how these different features affect the way the graph looks, check out that optional video uh, that kind of shows some of those Desmos examples.